Hey everyone, Striking Mukluk here with a guide on all strike missions. I have separate guides for some of these, but as a community we have simplified them to the point where each one can be explained in seconds. So I'm time stamping each of them here so you can consult them anytime you need. General info. What are strike missions? These are 10-man content added in the Icebrood Saga. They are easier than raids. There are seven at the time of this video. Three of them are insanely easy, three mildly challenging, and one I don't recommend doing more than once due to how long it takes, but I will cover them all. In strike missions you will get loot as well as bonus loot based on how fast you kill the boss. Many of them even have a jackpot rare drop, such as this chair. You will also get profit shards which you can spend in Eye of the North to get ascended gear. All but one of the strikes are accessible from the large portal in Eye of the North. The last strike, Forging Steel, is accessed at the scrying pool in the same zone. Strikes are meant to be baby steps into raids, offering 10-man content with less risk and less reward, but still profitable and can get you endgame gear as mentioned before. Additionally, when looking for strike groups in the group finder, if you see a group that asks for you to have LI, which is proof of raid boss kills, these people are insane. That about covers the basics, so in order from easiest to hardest, here we freaking go. Shiver Peaks Pass. Run in, dodge or stability through the giant boulder, and start the small jumping puzzle. Jump up to here, glide across. You can skip half of this. Jump up and glide around the right wall to skip most of the rest. Few more small jumps to the end. After someone has made it there, the beacon lights and other players can use it like a waypoint to port to you. Get the boss's hit points to zero. He seriously doesn't have a single dangerous ability worth mentioning, he just pushes you around. Voice of the Fallen and Claw of the Fallen, aka the Coca-Cola Bears. Get the buff from the pylon, dodge all the red areas during the fight, and try to kill them both at the same time. After one dies, the other one will enrage. You can watch their hit points in the top right corner. Most groups start off attacking the bow-wielding bear. Frenier of Jormag. I call this the last of the ultra easy bosses. Red areas are bad, dodge the red arrows. When he does freezing circles everywhere, there's usually a safe spot in the dead center of the room. When he goes big, you can choose to not interrupt him to make the fight faster, as that makes him invulnerable for a time. Epidemic is great for killing his crystals before they turn into additional adds. Whisper of Jormag. This is the first strike with any degree of difficulty, only because of one of the boss's skills. Use the pylon before the fight. He will uppercut you constantly. Nothing you can do about it. Glide if you can't take the falling damage. Split up when you are red circles and dodge it. Sack in greens. Don't stand in tornadoes or other red areas. At 75% you get split up and fight your clone for a bit then return. Do not use your utility buttons that's 7, 8, and 9 by default while fighting the clone as it has a known bug associated with it. Just trust me. Random people will get chains. This does not hurt the person chained but will hurt any when the chain touches. So if one panicked player runs around the room with a chain, he will cut everyone in half. Don't stand in the boss's hitbox or every chain will hit you. When boss gets an interrupt bar, use the special action key. At 25% he does the fight your clone thing. Afterwards he gets a new dangerous skill. When you see these arrows, dodge away from him. That's when the orbs start. Think of it like a shotgun. The closer you are, the more it will hurt. Some groups will use a necromancer's summoned flesh worm here in the dead center of the boss's hitbox to soak the orb so they explode at spawn. If you do this, tell your party as this will trigger dozens of explosions per second at their spawn point, but the rest of the room will be safe. Note, this boss is prone to a couple of bugs if it takes you more than a couple of attempts to kill him. Sometimes you may see two abilities happening at once such as chains and red circles, etc. You can still kill him or wipe and reset if that's too much. Bone Skinner. This boss has some mechanics with lighting the torches and no one does that. Use the pylon at the start, bring extra healing. Everyone stack up together. When the boss does a breath, that's the cone, or raises his front right hand, which summons circles under every player, step to your left. There are other small circles that will sometimes spawn you can heal through. Don't move for those. Only watch for the circles he raises his arm for. If you don't step left in two seconds or so, you die unless a heal scourge loves you. This fight is incredibly simple, yet punishing. When he pulls you in, just go back to where you were. When he gets an interrupt bar, interrupt him, special action key if you can at that moment. When he summons ads, 
hands, pull them in, and kill them. Spectral Grasp is great for this. When he leaps, dodge the giant red circle. If he turns and growls, he's about to run in a straight line, then leap back. Just step aside, let him pass, then dodge the return. This fight truly is, if bad things happen, step left or dodge. And dealing with the ants. There is a line of Bone Skinner weapons that change your spell animations as well if you fancy them. Cold War. Use the pylon, use the table, get the EMP. Assign one person to picking up char zookas to shoot down helicopters. Kill ads for 5 to 10 minutes until the real boss spawns. The faster you kill, the more loot you get at the end. Periodically, a large mini boss will spawn that will also fill up the loot bar. Once again, Spectral Grasp and other similar pulls are great here. Every mini boss and the final boss has shockwave attacks that pulsed before firing. You can jump over these or dodge. Once you can fight the real boss, you will occasionally call in cars. Avoid them. Firewalls, avoid them. Red circles, avoid them. When she says assassin strike quickly, try your hardest to dodge this. It will downstate the average player. Revive if needed. This boss can have different buffs each day. One of them is called Icy Echoes and basically translates to you will hit your teammates if you're too close to them. Get in the habit of spreading a few feet apart from one another on this boss and you'll be all right. If everyone is having trouble staying alive, you probably have a bunch of DPS stacked up in melee refusing to read tooltips. The final strike is Forging Steel. This is not difficult, but it is much longer than the others, so I don't do it much. Enter this one from the scrying pool, turn into a cat, and start doing events to help Ryland's warband. This one has challenge motes if you want more punishment. Kill Svaniers to the south, Put ammo in the tank and shoot the dummies. No, not your DPS, the straw ones. Go north and gather the ingredients for tonics. The alpine blossoms are way up on the cliff. You'll have to jump for those. Apply the tonics in the only sensible way, hurling them at each other in glass bottles. West, you can help the sniper snipe. Have fun with big numbers. Soon after, the tank rolls out. To summarize the next stretch, escort the tank, keep it alive. You can heal it because that makes sense. Speed buffs do work on the tank. Optional mini events will occur, like joining the sniper up on a nearby hill, trying to get more kills than one of the NPCs, stuff like that. Eventually, you are stopped by a door. Destroy the two nearby warding seals, then use the tank to break the door down. When you get to the raid to bridge, find the three runes on the ground and stand on them to lower it. Push all the way to the end to fight the ancient forgeman. Kill the portals, pick up ammo, step on the glowy runes to buff the tank, keep the tank alive with heals. Eventually, when you see the boss's break bar, get in the tank and use the harpoons. Then, after the grapple target key becomes available, hold it down. Once you stun him, you can do much higher damage with yourself outside of the tank or using the tank's gun. Kill him to finish the strike. There is a large chest in Eye of the North you can open once per week that will have more loot if you have done each of the strikes listed above it at least once that week. Don't forget to open this. Now you know how to do all the strikes. You're welcome. If you like this video or found it useful, please consider hitting the like button to help us out with the YouTube algorithm. Leave a comment with any tips or tricks I missed to share with others, and subscribe for more similar content. Special thanks to our dear patrons who help pay for these videos and literally make this possible. If you'd like to become one yourself and earn a bunch of perks such as early access and bonus videos, there's a link to that in the description. That's all for today. Happy striking!